All right, we live. So I have for a topic where we we agreed upon. Um, give me one second. Consistency was early and um, the, the importance of consistency, um, the results of inconsistency and purpose. That's the thing we want to uh, talk around this evening. And I was walking yesterday and God gave me a scripture. I want to. They, like I said, and, and, I, and I dropped in my spirit. And um, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That means he never changes. And we look at the example of consistency. That's that's <clears throat> that's a characteristic of the Father, where it's where it's you know something that we or something that I should try to mimic to be the same yesterday, today, and for the duration. I mean, outside of growing, you know, my consistency, um, how that looks for me is my prayer life, you know, um, morning, throughout the day, every night, you know, because there are people, first of all, I needed to, to, to operate, to, to, to deal with what I have to deal with, the warfare that I deal with in my mind, to, to keep myself uh, upright, to keep myself uh, where I feel God wants me to be. Um, and then secondly, having children and having them come behind you. And secondly, again, you know, having my wife, you know, they, they look for consistency. They look for uh, stability. They look for you to be the same, no matter what's going on. Um, I had a pastor used to always talk about being even keel, um, whether things are, 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 are going your way or things may not, you know, be going your way. Um, staying in that same vein of, of consistency. And when I was looking at it, um, on, when God gave it to me yesterday, it, he just pointed it out to me. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's a that's a characteristic that he has, and that's a characteristic that we can we can depend on. We can we can we can come to him and know that, um, he's always there. We can. We can we can call on him and he's there. We can we can search his word and his word doesn't change. Um, it's not like a, a update where something changed, something was removed. No, it's 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 the same. And um, that's something I gravitated to. So I'm I'm going to uh, dig into that a little bit deeper. I'll let you guys go ahead. <clears throat> All right, I'll go ahead and jump in. Uh, about consistency and purpose. Um, once you find your purpose, it's easy for you to stay consistent. Uh, it's hard for you to stay consistent if you don't have a purpose because you're waking up every morning with nothing to uh, gravitate to. So, you know, once you find that purpose, it allows you to, uh, to, to, to be consistent once again. Um, one of the things that will also keep you consistent is, is the mindset. Uh, when you wake up, are you waking up with expectation uh, of some good happening? Are you focusing on the good things that's going on in your life? Are you focusing on those things that are honorable in your life, uh, the people that surround you? That's honorable? Are you focusing on the things that's going to lift your spirits to keep you consistent, keep you going for that purpose? Uh, the people surrounding you, encouraging you to uh, to stay consistent, to stay on track, chasing that purpose. Do they understand your purpose? Uh, are they uh, helping you to slingshot closer to your purpose? Uh, one of the verses uh, you know I like to use to to to, to help me stay consistent is uh, Psalms one eighteen and twenty four, and uh, I think everybody kind of knows the verse. Uh, it just says, "This is the day the Lord." has made let us rejoice and be glad in it that's just letting us know 
like P said earlier, no matter what the circumstances is, I got to be consistent and steadfast. Yeah, if I'm going through something, it's not my job to let you see it. It's not my job to sit there and complain about it uh, to you. It's not my, my job to, to uh, focus on the problem. I need to focus on the solution. I, I need to push, hallelujah, uh, to, to, to be rejoicing, to be glad in it. Why? Because whatever it is, I know my God's going to get me through it. Whatever it is, it has a purpose to make me stronger. Whatever it is, I'm going to get through it. Hallelujah. But when I start complaining, I start murmuring, start thinking about the bad things. It's hard to stay consistent, hard to stay on your purpose because you focus on the wrong things. Uh, none of us on the call are perfect. None of us are not ever going to go through something. We are going to go through something. That's just life. As long as you're living, it's a couple of guarantees in life. The first one is you won't go through some things. I mean, we all got that in common. Everything else is optional. Uh, we're going to go through some things. The other thing that uh, we all going to do, that's not an option. We all got to transition and get up out of here. <laughs> we, we all got to leave. That's, that's not an option. But while you're here, you want to be consistent. You want to find that purpose. And that purpose and that consistency is not only for you. It's to help drive the brothers and sisters close to you. To let them know there is a God. Yeah, I, I know this brother was going through something, but man, he was always consistent, always praising God, always giving God glory, always encouraging somebody, always doing something. Um, you know, it, I think, you know, we may all have in the time being around somebody that's always complaining, always negative, glass half empty. That drains you, that drains your spirit. You know, don't be that person that's inconsistent. Bringing somebody else down, leaving somebody else with your problems, or leaving somebody else with your 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 complaining, then you walk away down. They have that on their spirit. So, you know, find that verse that's gonna keep you consistent. Find that verse. Find your purpose in life. Uh, whatever you gotta do, give God glory every day. That's gonna keep you consistent. Praising God every day, Hallelujah. That's gonna keep you consistent. Because God is good. He woke you up. You ought to be praising him. Hallelujah. I'm going to end with that. And, and let uh, Kay chime in or somebody else chime in. Hallelujah. Somebody, somebody, uh, somebody's off mute. Can you call me? Recording. There you go. I think you got him. Yeah, we good. Go ahead, Kay. Um, if you, yes, sir, yes, sir. Evening, man. Bless y'all, brothers. You know, um, that consistency, man, it's, it's a strong piece, it's a strong walk, you know. And, um, when a, it always it, it brings me back to something, man, like I was speaking on last week, I was, I was thinking about thinking about Noah, man, and um, how he was just building that ark, and it took so many years, and it took years, but he was consistent of taking piece by piece, and I, I look over my life and some of the things, man, like when I wasn't walking the way that I'm thinking that I should be walking, but I was consistent with that walking, you know, it was just draining me down. It was It was taking me to a place where I supposed to go, you know what I'm saying? Hit rock bottom, facing death, looking at those things and the consistency of that walk. I was consistent with it, you know what I'm saying? Wake up in the morning, blowing a blunt, blunt to the head, um, going, going about the day, you know what I'm saying? Activities or hustling or doing what I was doing, you know what I'm saying? And we're consistent with it, trying to get a dollar, trying to, trying to, you know, mess with a woman or this and that and that. These little things was it was it was right there, but it it, it led to, you know what I'm saying, to um uh, to death. You know, and, and that's what that's what they want to do. And and the death that I'm talking about, not the the death where we transition over. It was death in the mind of I can't it was like a stop. It's like, I can't do nothing else. I, I, I need something. I, I, I was dead to myself. The flesh was just so, so overriding 
by the activities of the world, even that got tired that it had to settle down. But the consistency of, you know what I'm saying, now I'm going to start something new. I'm going I'm to change my mind. I, I need to start something. I need something fresh. And and this being, you know, you, you, you see those things. I was so consistent in, in that past life that my son, my oldest son, was witnessing that he was looking at each and every move that I was making. And he seen that routine, so he 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 played along with it too. He 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 start dipping and dabbing and doing what daddy do, you know. And but the, the consistency, man, you know those those things, man. It just to try to break those cycles, man. It's it's hard, really. It's it's hard. We we it, it comes to a point of you know what what do you really really want. You know, I had to look at myself with like, what what do I really want, man? How how can I get here? How can where's my starting point? Where where do I start? Where do I begin? You know, um, who do I listen to? Who who do I see? You know, um, what where is my what's in my environment? What's 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 in my eyesight? What what can I pull in? Something that the spark in me, but it, it's that dying need of, you know what I'm saying, man. I need, I need that need to change i need i need something that's gonna make me better and and i I just love the way that the lord gave a word you know in in that hour in that dark hour and where where it seemed like it wasn't no light no hope the lord gave a word he gave he gave he gave some instructions and building off it building off those instructions where where guys say um Kevin Palmer, I've seen your tears so many times, they don't move me. And 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 I'm like, Lord, what, what must I do? Feed yourself with the word and starve out to death. And those instructions right there was more of I, right, you're telling me to trust in, in, in your word. You're tell you giving me something that 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 I need to do. So when I start applying the first day. Then it came a second day. Then it came a third day. And this this going with it, this going with it. And I'm going to tell you, things wasn't, it seemed like it wasn't getting no better. Things seemed like, it, it seemed like it, it wasn't, wasn't nothing happening. But I knew it, it, that knowing part, this, that, that I know, you, you told me that you, you told me, Lord, this, this is what you told me. I'm going to trust in your word. But um, before we get in in, in in deeper into it, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to let somebody else go. You know, this, this, the consistency part, man, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a vital, vital, strong piece. Yeah, um, yeah you're right. Uh, and, and before I move on, I just want everybody to understand, and, and Pete probably is going to reiterate that too also, for the new individuals on the call, it is open dialogue. So uh, if you have something to say or express yourself, please do. We definitely want to hear from you. Uh, everybody's word is important, so don't feel like it's you, you don't have to say something. But if you don't have anything to say, that's fine too. But definitely, if you have something to say, please chime in uh, and, and and let us hear what you have to say, because like again, like I said again, everybody voice of is very, very important here. Uh, what Kevin said it is it's true. It, it's consistency. Uh, the example, if you go to the gym and you're trying to get strong and, and build muscle, you're going to have to be consistent with that thing. Uh, you're trying to lose weight. You're going to have to be consistent with that thing. You have to change your diet. You're going to have to uh, uh, exercise, eat right. You're going to have to do all those things. But the first important thing that a lot of us don't focus on or speak about, but it's the first step inconsistency that's changing your mindset because it all started in your mind you got to tell yourself this is what i got to do this is what i'm going to do this is what i have to do uh yes we know the physical part is there but if your mind is not telling your body to get up if your mind is not willing your body's not doing anything it's the same in the in the spiritual aspect we got to tell ourselves man i God, I got to get closer to you. Uh, you know, I got to read and meditate on your word day and night. I got to do what I need to do to uh, to get better. Uh, 
you know, if you was to uh, think I put some out uh, yesterday, so a couple of men, uh, if you you want your tomorrow to get better, you, you're gonna have to do something to get it better. You're gonna have to your 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 tomorrow and the next day it gets better because you're improving every day. Uh, so if you're not improving every day, you're not gonna get better. Yeah. If you if you're not trying to improve every day, you're not gonna get better. Uh, nothing stays the same and grows at the same time. You know, you hear a lot of fellas say, hey, oh man, I'm just maintaining. That's that's a bad cliche. That means you're not growing. You're staying in the same place. You, you're not doing anything. You know, everybody should want to be better. Everybody should want to grow, because guess what? <laughs> Next year, I don't care what's your age, you won't get older. <laughs> and once you get older, things don't move as fast. So time is going to elapse on you. So we, you know, be consistent on every day saying, I got to get better. Even if it's 1%, I got to get better. I need to get better. I want to get better. If not for you, for your family, for your kids, for your wife, whoever it may be, I want to get better as a man and I need to get better as a man. Uh, without that purpose, you know, it's hard sometimes. And like Kevin said, it's not easy. It's hard sometimes. Uh, one of the things, you know, simple thing, and, and I know it's not manly, but get yourself a journal. Talk to God. Write it down. Even God says, write the vision down and make it plain. He letting us know, right? Get a journal. You know, write, write my conversations down that I talk to you so you can walk Jeremiah 29, 11, so you can walk my plans out. Uh, uh, sometime you might get up in the middle of the night he talking to you get that journal write it down go back and read it but to stay consistent and, ha and on on your purpose and having the consistency you can't do this by yourself can't work you're gonna have to either tie into a group of men like this but most importantly you have to tie it into the maker so you can understand his plans for you once you understand his plans you can get to his purpose then you can get to that consistency to becoming the man that God has designed you to be. And, and God has designed you to be a masterpiece. That's what he that's what he says. You're a masterpiece. A masterpiece is not duplicated. A masterpiece has value. A masterpiece is, 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 is to someone is, is don't touch that. Why? Wow, that's my masterpiece. That's how you have to look at yourself every day as a masterpiece and encourage yourself. So you can say consistency and just let you know I'm worth it. I'm valued. And uh, we all will get that. And we'll get that together. That's why we have, you know, this call. We're going to get that together to, to encourage each other, motivate each other in whatever way we can. Hallelujah. I'm in with that. Hey, Mike. Yes, sir. Uh, real quick. So you, you said something, said something powerful, bro. Um, break down for us the lifting weights because you you know when you starting off with lifting weights you you gradually you know grow from one set to another set mm -hmm. to another stage can you can you break that down and the effects of the body of how you starting off how it hurt the next day hallelujah i'm i'm a va i'm elaborate but uh by no way <laughs> am i no no personal trainer man <laughs> <laughs> So you put me on the spot, but no way. I'm no person trained. I, matter of fact, I need to get in the gym. <laughs> uh, but now, uh, I think as men, I think everybody has probably started working out, whether it's just push-ups or going to the gym. As Kay said, that first day, if you're pushing yourself hard, man, that next day, your muscles hurt so bad. You can barely scratch your shoulder. But every week, if you stay consistent, that pain slowly goes away. That basically where there's the soreness is because your muscles are trying to stretch and grow. And lastly, you haven't used them in so long, they need to stretch and grow. But as you continue to go, the pain goes away. As you continue to go, you get stronger. One week, you may start off with 135. Second week, 155. The next week, 185, then 225. You constantly increase your weight so you can get stronger. If you stay at 135, you're not going to get strong. You won't have to put some extra weight on there to increase your strength. Yes, you won't struggle. 
but you got to increase your weight. Hallelujah. But the most important part is finding yourself a workout partner. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> finding yourself a consistent workout partner to go to the gym with. Why? You will definitely get stronger because when that weight get heavy, he will put two fingers. You're going to be like, look here, man, if you don't put your hands around this weight, but all you need is two fingers. That's why he's encouraging you. Guess who that is? That's God. <laughs> yes, sir. Lord is your workout partner. Lord is your workout partner. He ain't, the good thing about him, he's consistent. His word says, I'll never forsake you. I'll leave you with you every day. Unlike your workout partner. Man, I got to work late tonight, man. I came each at the gym. God said, man, I ain't never got that problem. I'm always be with you. Day, night, morning, afternoon, when it's raining, it's snowing, it's cold. Uh, uh, when he can't be there, I'm going to be there. Hallelujah. That's the God we serve. That's our workout partner. That, that, that's the, that's the, the, the strength to us. He gives us strength. You know, when, when, when we have no more strength, he said, hey, go ahead and get another rep in there. <laughs> he said, go ahead and get another rep. I know you're going through it, but don't quit now. Get yourself another rep. I know your buddy going through it, call him. Encourage him. Give him another rep. You know, we got to, as men, we just got to do better in checking on each other to keep us consistent, to keep us on our purpose. We just got to do better, you know. And, and, and the circle, I thank God for, you know, my circle, my, you know, P, K, uh, my son, uh, just gentlemen in my circle, man, is, I know they'll call me and say, how you doing? What's going on? You all right? You need something? If you don't have a circle like that, sometimes you got to reevaluate your circle. You might be hanging on to something or someone that God is trying to get out your life. Ain't nothing worse than hanging on to something that God trying to get out your life because now that becomes a ball and chain. That becomes a weight because you're carrying something around that God is trying to get rid of. But once again, you got to find them right, that right group and, and, and start off with God. God, gonna, God is going to reveal to you who you need in your life and how long they're going to be in your life. Hallelujah. I'm getting excited, but I'm going to let somebody else go because I'm, I'm about to get start talking. Could I chime in for a second? Good yes, evening sir. to everybody. Uh, this is Larry again. Um, this uh, consistency is, is, is a major, um, I feel like it's a major part of my character that decides where I'm headed. I think that we miss a major part of consistency and the major part of consistency is identity understanding who we are because the question is asked you want me to be consistent but consistent to what if there's no understanding of who you are if there's no understanding of where you're going and what and what you should be when you get there it's hard for you to be consistent the bible says in first peter 2 and 9 but you are the chosen people a royal priesthood a holy nation God's special yeah. possession that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. He, you're, royal, you're chosen. But if I don't know I'm chosen, I don't know to be consistent to being chosen. In Ephesians 2, 5 through 7, it says, even when we were dead in sin, have quickened us with Christ by grace ye are saved and have raised us up together and made us to sit in heavenly places with Christ. If I don't know that I'm seated with Christ in heavenly, in heavenly places, I don't know to consistently, consistently act that way, to, to consistently hold myself to that standard. The Bible says that God will raise up a standard. Understand that a standard is a flag. It's a flag, it's a, mark, a marktation. It says that this kingdom or this land belongs to this kingdom. You should have standards in your life. Not just principles, but also standards that a flag goes up with certain activities that don't match who you are. It doesn't match you being a royal priesthood. It doesn't match you. The Bible calls us uh, God in, in Psalms 82. It says that God has called you God. Psalms 82 in verse 6. 
It says that God has called you, has, has called you God. If you don't know that you are a little him in the earth, mm-hmm. if you don't know that you're supposed to walk in authority and dominion and command the earth to yield its goods to you, mm-hmm. you cannot consistently be that person. So you will consistently be whatever society has taught you to be. Mm-hmm. The moment we, we release ourselves from the binds of what society has taught us or what our families called us, Maybe you grew up in a house where your mother had a problem with your father and she consistently told you, you're your father. You're never going to be anything. You're going to be just like your father. And you consistently saw your father be nothing. What does that leave you as a man? It leaves you in a, in a predicament where you're going to consistently follow what you were told you are. But now if I understand, if I read God's word and I understand that I'm a royal priesthood, I'm God's chosen, I'm God's elite. Mm -hmm. I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places by grace because I'm saved. And I'm not saved by my actions. I'm not saved by my lifestyle. I'm saved by grace. I'm saved by the cross of Calvary. I'm saved by the blood of Calvary. Mm -hmm. And not only am I saved by the blood of Calvary, but when I became co-heirs with Christ and became seated in heavenly places with Christ, I also took on the characteristics of Christ, which is God in earth, God with us. And once we consistently understand that we are sons of God, that we are walking many hymns in the earth, we can consistently produce the fruit that he produces. And I'm done. Hallelujah. Love every word. That's good right there. Yeah, yeah. That's that good. Was. You know, good. the image, man, the character, the nature. Once you once you understand that of, you know what I'm saying, you made in his image and you made in his likeness, then you can receive his characteristics. Then you then you start knowing who you are. You know, one of the greatest things, man, you 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 think about the person who who look at themselves of of being, you know what I'm saying, who God called them to be. First thing they got in their head, you know what I'm saying? If a, if you're a painter, they got an image. They got an image of what they want, what they like, what they want to draw, what they want to put on that painting. So what they do is, you know what I'm saying, they have the finished product in their head, but then they start. They start. They start sitting up at pain. 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 Each and every piece. That's just like the word. You start painting that word in you. You knowing his nature, his characteristic, his identity. You becoming consistent with it. You start seeing who you are in, in the word. The word showing you who you are. Building off it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, fellas, I, I want to comment real quick, if you don't mind. Um, and, and thank you for having me back on. Um, and and that was a powerful statement. Um, powerful statement. Um, and thank you for, for saying that. Um, but uh, this is how God works. Um I preached on on some of this on Sunday, and um, I want to give a testimony and a shout out to the Lord above and hallelujah. Um, amen. Um, I literally just got back from North Carolina, um, and God touched me several times this week. Um, and talking about consistency, um, I read that exact verse on Sunday um in church and it goes into um the simple fact that us as men or even women um but uh in this simple fact that as our daily um our daily grind um we show the character of Christ we show that all the the characters of Christ to the people that we meet. Um, I'm just going to give a quick testimony because I don't want to talk too much and take up too much time. But um, this week I went to see a little old lady that moved down to Carolina. And we sat there for a couple of days and just talked and talked about God and godly things. And it, it brought so much joy to my heart to just talk to her because she's an elderly lady living on her own and her own children barely make the time to come see her. And 
Um, she's called me so many times and I literally just got home and she's called me like three times since I've been home to tell me how much she misses me since I got home just because she loves God mm -hmm. um, and just being consistent about showing that love. Um, and not to mention, she took me to see um, a pastor that she knows down there. Um, and this pastor is blind. And this pastor played the piano and sung for me. And it blew my mind. And we shared the in joy and love of Christ. And as godly men, godly men sharing in the love of Christ. Christ, being consistent in that love of Christ. And I think that's the one thing of like waking up every day um, and sharing in the love of Christ, spreading the gospel, doing those things that we are supposed to do as godly men. Um, and like uh, the gentleman just said, um, knowing that I'm a part of a, a royal priesthood, um, not that some person has told me, oh, you're going to grow up and you're going to be worth nothing or, or this or that. But knowing that God loves me. And then when I got to my other hotel, I went to another place this weekend and we just got back today. I'm out down at the water's edge and a man, we just walked up and we started talking about God. I didn't even know this man from Adam had never even met this man. And we started talking about God. It wasn't a coincidence. God put that man in my life and we started talking about God. And that's what's called, that goes back to that being consistent. God was the same yesterday as he is today, as he will be tomorrow. And he wants us to be the same thing. He wants us to talk about him with love, faith, hope, peace, joy, yesterday, tomorrow, today, every day, the rest of our life to always be spreading that gospel and joy amongst each other. And even the people that don't like him to even show that peace all the time, be consistent in our brotherhood and in our Christianity to all people every single day, even if we don't know them. When we walk down the road and somebody sees us, they ought to see Christ in us. And this week to be able to see all that stuff and then to hear this tonight when when he spoke that, I was like, man, have I been blessed this week? Have I been blessed? Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah. So, so, so question. Um, as my son brings me this charger, what what? So me and Kev was talking um, last week, and um, one of one of the topics. Thank you, man. One of the topics came up where it was, um, you know, the the effects of not being consistent. And like Kevin was saying, you know, um, you got some men that grew up and they didn't have any examples, right? They didn't have any godly examples. They didn't they didn't see anybody being consistent and you know, Mike, you know me. When I get on here, I, I, I want to break it down and 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 help brothers that may not be in the same space. <laughs> what what you're saying may be foreign. Like, what, what are you really saying? You know, how do I start from ground zero? So, so ground zero, everything is everything that's been said is is is, is, is word, right? But you have to understand. And one thing I have to continually understand is I have an adversary. So going to the gym and lift weights is fine. Like that's in the natural, but in the, in, in the spiritual walk, you have to understand that there's an adversary. There's somebody that does not want you to be consistent because of what you, what, what's telling you, what's behind you, who's watching you, who, who can, if I can hold down and, 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 and think about this as the enemy, if I can keep you down, um, or if, if one escapes, that's fine. But if you if you escape and you understand the the importance of consistent, you find out who you are, and then you come back. That that journey gets a little bit more harder because the adversary fights that much more. So um, that 
that part about being consistent, it's it's not easy, like Kev said, but it's 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 required. And each level that you that you go to, more is required. So when you like you were saying about the waste, when you feel that resistance, that resistance isn't I'm doing something wrong. That resistance is you're going to another level. Um, there are more eyes on you. There's more that's expected of you. So what time you get up may change. Your prayer life may change. And it's just a part of that journey. We look at examples and we say, look, you want to be like this guy, you know, whether it's somebody that's fit or whether that's somebody that's made it financially or whether that's somebody that preaches and can and, and go through the scriptures and different things. But there, there's time when they stop doing something to do something else that's going to make them better. And one thing is me and we, we that, that I understand is I told my mom something without knowing anything about Christ. Um, I told her when I was maybe 14, 14 or either 16 years old, I remember where I was. I said, I'm gonna break this cycle. I didn't know what that meant, but there was some generational things that I had to deal with, but Christ was there with me. Well, you're talking about drugs. You're talking about a whole lot of different things. Uh, a womanizer, all those different things you had to, I had to deal with, but Christ was there. Right. And I didn't, I didn't understand that. And there's times you want to just lay out and say, woe is me, Lord. I really don't want to, to, to deal with this. But those are things that I can talk to my son about. Those are things when the enemy comes in, he knows that I can't deal with them the same way as I deal with the people that were, that, that came before them. Um, like you said, it's not easy, but understanding, and, and Mike said something, when, when you deal with the mindset, you, you you deal with those thoughts that, that that are there. That's why the Bible says, cast down thoughts, imagination, every th high thing that tries to exalt itself above the knowledge of Christ. That's consistent. That's every single day for me, just pulling down strongholds. That's me. Um, no, that's not God. No, that's not God. No, that's not God. I mean, how many thought? I mean, how many thoughts do the enemy send to you? It, it just lets you know how valuable you are. But this does not come easy, and and it's something that um, you got to get off the bench and you got to start. And your start may not look like somebody else's start, but you have to start. And we can't do it without Christ because. Sometimes you're, you're faced with, sometimes things will come. And I know this from my own life. Sometimes things will come and it's something that needs to be broken off your family. And as men, those are times we can't falter back because there's somebody behind you. And if you don't deal with it, that person's going to have to deal with it. And if that person doesn't deal with it, the other person will have to deal with it. Like you see people break generational curses where wealth comes in the family. You see people break generational curses where homosexuality comes out of the family and different things like that. So this is, this topic is not something like this is this is this is real life. This is this is where the rubber meets the road. This is am I in or am I out? You know, and um, yeah, I'm gonna let somebody else jump in. Put this thing on charge. Hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, I know I said I was gonna be quiet, but I, I'm gonna give you a, a, a real life example. Um, this year, um, and uh, KP knows this. Um, I'm a teacher and a pastor and I work in our public school systems. Um, and yeah, and as y'all all know, our public school systems are, are wild and way out there. Um, and I actually got wrote up this year. I had a young lady come to me and ask me to pray for her grandmother who was dying, um, which is not against the law. If the child comes to, uh, you and ask for prayer or ask about God or whatever, but the school actually, um, and the school is the same school that me and KP went to. Um, and, um, you know, here's the thing about being consistent. Like, um, there was another, the other child turned me in and they threatened to fire me. Um, and the enemy, like you said, the enemy attacks and continues to attack and continues to attack. And um, I think like with that question you asked, how do you fight that enemy and never give up? Um, you know, um, I, I would wear, because I'm a PE teacher, I'm allowed to wear t-shirts and stuff. Um, I would wear godly t-shirts every day that, that were spiritual t-shirts. I wore shorts with spiritual t-shirts. Um, 
And I still, I never stopped if a child came to me and talked about God because they knew I was a pastor. Um, I, because, you know, the Bible says if you, I, I believe it's uh, Romans 18, 1, I think it is. Um, if you, um, if you are ashamed of me, then I will be ashamed of you. You know, I'm not ashamed of my God. You know, and, and we have to, as men, as women, you know, we have to believe and deeply believe in our soul. I'm not talking about our heart. I'm talking about our soul. And we have to believe that God comes first before job, before anything else. And, you know, I'm not going to take a back seat to my boss, to anybody else. And I know that we have to pay our bills. We have to do all those things. And, but, you know, and, and we got to know that that enemy is going to attack. And if I have a child that's coming to me that doesn't know Jesus, that doesn't, you know, know the Trinity or whatever it is. Um, and they ask me and they say, you know, Coach Watkins or Pastor Watkins, you know, who is this Jesus guy? You know, who is, you know, who is, you know, I've, I've had them even ask, like, what, what is an art? What is Noah? You know, I'm going to tell them who Jesus Christ is. Um, and so I, I'm not, I can't, you know, put my job before God. Um, and so that's part of that, you know, going back to being consistent um, and, you know, doing the father's will before my will. Larry, Larry said something. Um, you said something um, with regards to 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 knowing your um, your identity. Um, I I think um, well, once I got saved, uh, you know, my relationship with Christ began to grow. You know, my prayer life, and He told me who I was, and He told me what He wanted me to do. Um, and just like David, you know, it doesn't start the next day. David was anointed king. He didn't start the next day. You know, it still was some things that he went through. Um, I think with, with, with Christ, what he called us to do, it never changes. But, um, you know, that road starts. That road starts. That road begins there. So this, 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 this topic, this consistency gets a little bit easier when you know. Um, it's definitely easier when you got somebody with you, like you were saying about spotting you when, when you're lifting weights, um, a good analogy, um, that you can tap in. You can tap into somebody, and, and, and they can give you, you know, one more rep, like you were saying, one more rep, keep pushing. You're on the right track. And for me, um, I thank God that's my wife because she was there, um, and I told her what my calling was. So so her being there, she reminds me, listen, this is a part of the assignment. And and that's that's been vital for someone like me because there are times where you're like, listen, man, I just – I just soon hang it up. Um, but what is there for me to look at um, in my family, outside of my circle, in my family, that shows me consistency, that shows me continuing to keep going. I mean, the men are kind of, you know, here, there, and everywhere. That's no excuse because I know who I am. Once I know who I am and I have people around me that can remind me in those times of uh, those valley experiences, you you you're you're able to tap in and say, okay, I understand that this is the adversary trying to keep me from where I'm supposed to be going. I need to bunker down. I need to uh, dig a little bit deep. I need to pull hard. I need to push harder. I, I need to readjust my schedule. Uh, maybe I can't watch the game tonight. You know, I need to to look at some scriptures as it pertains to this. I need God to. I, let me let me go for a walk. Let me really reevaluate what's important to me because. Um, I'm gonna say this piece. And I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm gonna say this piece again. The enemy is defeated, right? But he's consistent. One thing you can count on is the adversary being there every single day, every moment. So uh, when the Bible tells us to be on guard, be sober, be vigilant, you have to be sober. You have to be vigilant. You have to be true to who you are. I know who I am. I know what my purpose is, and because I know what my purpose is, I know what you're after. Because you wouldn't be after me if there wasn't something valuable there. Once I understand my purpose, once I understand there's value, once I understand what I'm supposed to be doing, then I can say, okay. Then I know what this is about. This is this is not about how I feel. This is not about 
uh, uh, anything else but like Jesus said, you know, fulfilling the purpose um, of the Father. Once you understand that, it gets a little bit easier. Once you understand that, it gets easier to the point which I know what directions I'm, I'm going in, but the work still remains. And this is not a work where it's like, all right, Lord, you know, I, I want you to do this for me. It, it doesn't it doesn't work like that. And these things that I'm putting out, the things that I'm learning, things that I'm, I'm experiencing, and um, the reason I want to continue to be consistent is for my family so they can see consistency, not perfection, consistency. So when I close my eyes on this side, they'll say, my dad finished his course. He didn't deviate from his course. He stayed the course. He continued to keep pushing. He continued to love God. He continued to stay in that word. Like I said, not perfect, but he continued to trot down his path. And to not have that example before me, it's like, man, but what can you do about it? When I told my mom that I didn't know what I was saying, but God was already in me, and I, when I released those words, it was like, okay, you don't understand what you're saying, but you will in a couple more years. I will break the cycle. And there's a couple of things that came up, and I'm like, Lord, what is this? But relying on the Holy Spirit, he said, this is what it is. Because he told me what it was, it made it easier, but that didn't mean that the test was just automatically passed. Like, okay, I told you what it is, now just pray one prayer. No, you still have to hunker down and go through it. Whether that's three months, six months, a year, this thing has to be broken. And I chose you to break it which is an honor, and that's how we must look at it. This is an honor. Now, Lord, help me to be consistent with this thing. Yeah, that's, that's good, P. Uh, I appreciate everybody that, that spoke tonight. And uh, to the pastor, you know, we're not here for you to be quiet. We, we want to hear what, what God is, is speaking into you. So praise God for you, and and uh, praise God, I think, is uh, the gentleman's Larry. So we appreciate everybody that's speaking up and what God is telling you. We want you to, to spit it out. That's what we're here for, to hear what, what God is speaking, to encourage us, to keep us moving, to keep us uh, uh, catapulting to the right direction, to encourage us to keep pushing for God. Uh, you know, as we all know, God is love. Uh, and it's up to us to represent God like everyone else has said when we out at the grocery store, we out at school as, as the pastor teaches, or we out just around kids, just around people. Uh, we say it just about on every call. Uh, that that person, you may be the only Jesus they see. <laughs> you may be the only godly person they see today, tomorrow. They, they probably haven't seen anybody uh, godly uh, with morals and character and, and, and just want to do the right thing. And that's our job, to represent God in a godly way at all times. Uh, and, and yes, the adversary is there. Um, sometimes you have to look at it as it almost like a reward. If he's coming after you, that means you got some goods. You have never seen a thief break in an empty house. Why? There's no goods in it. The adversary is coming after you because you got some goods. <laughs> you got something that he know if you cash it in, he in trouble. So that's why he's coming after you. So sometimes it's almost okay. like putting putting a badge on you and saying, you know what, you're coming after me. But boy, you got to fight because I got some goods. I got a vault here full of gold. You're not getting it. You know, you're not getting it. I, I'm going to fight you every day, every minute, every second. I'm going to meditate on that word day and night to ensure that I understand who I am, a raw priesthood. Uh, uh, when we meditate in that word, God, God revealing some things to us. We, we got to get in the word to understand who we are. And, and I understand sometimes, and, and, and it's probably more now, a lot of young men and women don't have that in their life. Somebody to show them what a godly man or godly woman looks like. But that's our time to, to shine. That's our time to, ex to explain to them, hey, get in that word, you know, do something different. You know, let, let, let's read a word together. Let's pray together. Let's do something godly together. Uh, you know, yet it, it's there. But I'm not giving you no excuses. We got enough excuses out there. Uh, I ain't got nobody. Uh, you got time to surf everything else on the internet. Won't you surf for a good program? Won't you surf somewhere where you can go spend some quality time with, with a godly man or, or a gentleman that's doing some some good stuff? Um, and, and, and I'm not trying to be a, a jerk about it, but we got enough excuses in the world. I, I, I haven't seen it. I don't see a godly, but 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 you can you can find something good. You can find somebody good. 
just like you can find somebody bad. We just got to make them understand. We got no time for excuses. Time for excuses is over. You got to do the right thing. Stand up and be who God has called you to be and speak the truth to them. Uh, you know, they can find anything. And, and today, young people, that, that little box is always in their hand. So you, you can't tell me, oh, I don't have, every time you look, the head is down. Instead of researching and Googling the wrong thing, instead of TikToking and watching people fighting and all this crazy stuff, why don't you research it? You know, this, this little box here, this, this, this little thing right here, why don't you YouTube a good message from a pastor? Why don't you find something to soak into and lock into that's going to give you something different? You know, that's, you know, and, and I keep harping on with that excuse. I don't have nobody. No, you got somebody. You can Google anything you want. You can YouTube anything you want. Sometimes it's not the enemy. It's you. And I'm not talking about you, Jim. I'm just talking to people in general. Sometimes it's just you. You want to research some bad stuff. You know, the enemy, the enemy is not doing everything. Sometimes it, we just make a fleshly decision to say this is what I want to do. So we just got to be truthful. Mike, let, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I'm going to go ahead. Let, let, no, no, you can, you, let, 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 let me say something real quick because we, we getting, we getting, we get we getting there on time and then I'll let you, I'll let you get it. Um, but God told me while you was talking, um, like we never know who's going to hear this. It may be somebody on the phone, right? So God say, come off the bench. And when he say come off the bench, that means, um, the, the gift is without repentance, or the call is without repentance. Ain't, ain't that's word? That's what the word said, right? So before the foundation of the world, God called us, right? So if He called, if He if He created you, and Kevin was talking about it, um, and you talk about it a lot, that masterpiece, right? You are who God says you are, not who your parents say you are, not who the world say you are, not what your name tag say when you go to work. And and I'm saying that to say, come off the bench, which means whatever God called you to do, that's who you are. And you said something, Mike. You said the badge. Your assignment and what you go through is going to be based on what God called you to do. So if you don't have the instructions for what God called you to do, that's not, that's not God's fault. The enemy is going to come at you, and what you face in life is going to be based on that call. So look at it in football. If you're a quarterback, what's coming after you? The defense, right? Your offense alignment, like, like you, you have to – Come off the bench. That's 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 what God gave me. The assignment, the, the once your life begins, it's already started. David was king before he was anointed with oil. God had already knew he was going to be the king, right? Mm -hmm. But when he anointed with him with oil, it's like baptism. It's like, okay, this is an outward showing that this is the person that I chose. But the assignment, who he was, was already there. And that's mm -hmm. the same thing that God just wanted me to share. Like, come off the bench. You never know who's going to hear this. Come off the bench. It's time to come off the bench. Just because you're sitting on the sideline doesn't mean that it's going to stop. Or doesn't mean that, I'm, hey, man, I'm just chilling. I'm, I'm going to be all right because I'm right here. Ain't nothing, ain't nothing really bothering me. The assignment is still the same. Hallelujah. That's right. good. And, uh, Can I say something? Yes, sir. Um, Go ahead. As Mr. P was saying, um, it just sort of came to my to my mind. Um, one thing that I I love about Bible is it is the way that oh how God chose to tell us about Him and His wonders. And one thing about Bible that is so amazing, there is nothing in life that we want and is not in Bible. Bible, he he brought everything there and he gave us how to get it and how to chase it. For example, if it says if you want to live long, honor your parents and mm -hmm. people above you, and you will live long. The price of sin is the death, and things like that. You know, for things that you want in life, the Bible gives you the solution. It's just up up for interpretation. He says, hey. Seek for my kingdom, and I will give you everything after. It's like mm -hmm. God, God, God rewards those who wake up early, things like that. Like Bible has all, all those things. It tells you how to get things. For example, as Mr. Devin say, hey, if if you are ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of like ashamed of you. Like all those things, and um, and then uh, Mr. Michael say, hey, sometimes it's not the enemy, it's you. And there's like a story of um. One day in a farm, 
uh, it was a horse. A horse was attached to was attached to a tree, and the devil came and devil released the released the the horse. So the the horse went to the farm and ate everything. And in that farm was living a couple. The wife saw it, and the wife killed the the horse. The owner of the horse saw his horse dead and came and killed the mom. The mom's husband gets home and sees his wife dead and kills the guy who kills his wife. And the guy who, and the son of the, the guy that was killed saw the guy and came and burned his, his farm. And they went back to Dev and said, hey man, look what you did. And his answer was like, I didn't do nothing. All I did was to release the horse. The rest was your desires. The rest was your heart leading you. The rest was like your lack of faith. The rest was like all those distractions. As Mr. Michael said, hey, sometimes it's not devil. Sometimes it's you, it's what inside of you. Sometimes what like what takes control or what is over you. And that is something that came to my mind then that he's he's totally right. Sometimes not the enemy. Sometimes we have to be aware of what is around us. We have to be aware that the circumstances and we have to recognize, hey, it's not anyone's fault. That is my fault. And um, when it comes to consistency, is um is is crazy because it's hard. Cons consistency is basically being disciplined about a goal. It's like, hey, I have this goal and I'll be disciplined. And sometimes it is about it is a matter of respecting that goal, you know? It is a matter of fearing, be be afraid of failing. Because one of the things like why God says fear God. We fear God because we know the consequences. We know if we don't fear God, we don't follow God. Mm -hmm. if we don't do what he says, we know the consequences. So, and sometimes to be consistent, it requires for us to know the rewards. It requires to know like what's gonna happen if we don't do that. And that's, and first of all, I would say like, hey, you gotta respect your goal. You gotta respect what you after, after. You gotta respect what is there. You gotta respect your call. You know, you in, inside of the house, if you respect your parents, you treat them differently. If, if, if for somehow you start losing that respect, you will treat also your parents different. So if you, it is a matter of respecting. If you respect it, you will treat it different. That's good. So, and that is something that we gotta learn. Now. Because if, you're, if your supervisor comes to you and say, hey, for a month, you get here 6 a.m. If you don't get here, you fight. 6 a.m., you'll be there. That's good. But if someone comes to you and say, hey, man, read the Bible for six months or for three days, and he will tell you, hey, do for you. Most of people won't do. Mm -hmm. If someone comes to you and say, hey, man, wake up 5 a.m. for yourself, you won't do. It's just that the lack of that respect, the, you got to respect, you know, and you got to know the consequences of not having respect for those things. You know, if you don't be there 6 a.m., that you're respecting that that order and you may lose your job. So when you understand what you're going for and you respect it, you take care and you see differently. And uh it, it that's about everything. More you respect, better you treat, and more you go for that things. Like and I would say like reading Bible and uh ask for the Holy Spirit to kind of guide you and help you interpret it is one of the best thing you can do. From the point you start understanding and see what the things that are over there, the instructions, because like Bible is a book of instructions. Mm -hmm. And those instructions will, will lead us to the aftermath that is the, hey, the paradise that everything is good. It's, I feel like, so if you like, life with instructions if you follow it's like let's let's do like you buy some uh, furniture for the first time a furniture that you never saw if you never put a furniture together you won't be able to put that furniture unless you are really good on that so normally if you get a furniture you get instructions and you follow it and you put the things together it's like bible 
if you get Bible and you apply the things, all the instructions that are over there in your life, you will fail. But you also have gonna have enough knowledge to recover and keep going. Because when you put a furniture together, but like, god damn, that table, oh yeah, I, I, god damn. So, but when you go back to the instruction, you'll be like, oh, that one is supposed to come here. So it's like more you go, more you read, more knowledge you will have, like stronger will be your faith and more understandable you will be to what is on your way. And more understandable you'll be why things happen that way. Sometimes it's hard for us to understand why that happened. We, it's just, and, and it, sometimes it leads to certain frustrations, but at the end of the day, you have somewhere to go that can give you the answer. It's just us being lazy to go get that answer. Mm. And so, but if you have like the respect to say, hey, I can be there for so long because something is waiting for me down the road and I want that award. As soon as you fail, you go there and you have over. So I would say like, respect your goal, respect what you aim and you will start treating it differently. Right, right, right. Yeah, I like, I like what you say that Mr. Miguel, uh, you say two things that were very important, two words, respect and instructions. The you know, Holy Spirit say, if you don't have no respect, you don't like to follow instruction, you're deemed for destruction. You know, and usually people that don't like instructions and don't have no respect for nobody or themselves, they destruct. Mm -hmm. They're very destructive because they don't want any structure. And to be with God, you're going to have to have some structure. You're going to have to follow instructions. So that was good. I like what you said. That, 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 that's right on time right there. Um, I see Mr. Jeff, before you go, okay, I seen Jeff had his hand up for a minute. Daddy, what are you doing? Come here. Mr. Jeff, I see you got your hand up. You, you, if you're speaking, you're on, you're on mute right you now. Gotta, you ain't got to say nothing. Just sit down. <laughs> Just watch. Damn. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm having issues with my Zoom here. Uh, I, I didn't have my hand up. I, I don't even I don't even have the bar across the bottom where I can do anything. The only thing I can do is mute and unmute. <laughs> so okay. that's, that's uh I apologize if it looked like oh, no, no. no need to apologize. I say no need to apologize. I just wanted to make sure if you had something to say, you get it out. I appreciate that. Yes, sir. Praise God. But um I want to go back. Mr. Miguel said some good stuff, and and I love what he said. And that that respect and that instruction was was very vital. It sounded like two little measly simple words, but they were uh, because that plays a big role in consistency. You know, having respect for God will make you consistent. Wanting to follow God's instruction will make you consistent. But that's the internal thing. You know, you got to want to be consistent. You, you, you know, you got to have respect for God and his word. You got to have a respect for God's people. You, you, you know, once we become saved, that's our obligation. You know, we say, God say, okay, you, you, you're on the team. As people say, get off the bench now. <laughs> uh, you know, you, you're on the team, get off the bench. Let's get, let, let, let's get busy. Um, uh, Let's let's find your purpose. Let's find your assignments and let's go get it. Uh, and it's not going to be comfortable all the time. And uh, the Holy Spirit told me to say something. I'm going to try to make it quick. P. I know we're getting cut all the time. Uh, when we talk about consistency. Uh, and, and on the call, there's it's only two people on this call that really know what, what I'm going to talk about real quick. And that's uh, uh, P and uh, my son. Uh, my consistency when I was going through my medical situation, uh, bottom line, I got diagnosed with prostate cancer. Uh, and they were doing certain you know, small treatments here and there. Uh, wasn't working. And I was a gentleman that never been sick. 
I did uh, 21 years in the military. I played football, baseball, basketball, ran track. Uh, being in the military, I only broke a finger. I don't even think I sprained an ankle before. So I never was sick. So when I got diagnosed, it went on a couple of, you know, got diagnosed in 2020. They were doing different treatments, but my PSA numbers kept going higher and higher. Uh, they were going to do uh, robotic surgery. By the time they, they was going to do robotic surgery, PSA numbers was too high. It was like nine, eight. They say, hey, we got to start an emergency chemo. That was October. Um, yeah, October. Yeah, October 2022. I started October, I think it was the 17th, every two weeks. The doctor was saying, hey, you're 53, man. Your bone mass is good. Your shoulders, you're strong. We're going to do massive dosage every two weeks. You will come in, you will just do mass dosage. Um, so every two weeks, was doing chemo. I praise God to my wife. And we never let it phase us. We even got to the point, God told us, we're not using the word cancer. Tell the doctors when they talk to you, we call them this the situation. Because everybody knows the C word is almost a dead word. So we had the doctors and nurses saying, when they say, hey, you know, you can't say, no, doc, we call it the situation. Because the situation, I'm going to get through. So did the chemo, uh, did my first chemo. Went back for my second one. The doctor said, man, we have never seen after the first chemo treatment, the numbers decreased like this. It went from nine, eight to like two, five. He said, we never seen that before. Never seen this medication work like this. My wife and I was in the doctor, we said, praise God, that's God. No disrespect to you, doc, but praise God. Man, that's what we're giving our credit to. Hit the chemo, January 20, you know, every two weeks up to January, I think it was 22nd or 27, I can't remember the exact date, was my last chemo treatment. Praise God, was cancer free. Uh, one of the great things, it goes back to consistency. That's where I'm going. So, and P, I told P one day, and P said, Man, I didn't know you was going through all that. But everybody, God told me, I don't want you to say nothing to nobody because I want your walk to <laughs> be your testimony. Yes, yeah, sir. And I was consistent and I made sure people that knew all my hair fell off and they would say, man, what's happened to your hair? So I just say, tell them you just decided to go with a new style. So I shaved it off. I said, man, I just shaved it off. People, you know, at church and, and ladies in my neighborhood, everybody, I was cutting my own grass. I didn't stop doing nothing. Whereas I hurt. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was hurting. But God said, I need you to be consistent. So they can see the God in me through you. And that was my whole thing was determined to be consistent. And you know, the first week, I'm not going to say I wasn't. The first week was the only time to really get to a point where I felt like asking God why. But I didn't want to because, you you know, we all get that. Oh, I never questioned God. But God said, no, ask me. And I said, why me, God? And he said, I want to give my strongest battles to my strongest soldiers. And I was in the shower and my hair was falling that, at that time. And I had a lot of hair. I had, I had a lot of hair. And uh, and he was just letting me know at the same time he's telling me, even though you love me, you never been a person to release anything totally to me. And I was like, what you mean, God? I always been, I'm going to take care of this. I'm going to fix that. I'm going to do this. Even when I was small, I would keep things to myself. I would fix things. I would do things for myself. Joining the military only made it worse because once you become a leader, you take care of everybody else's problems. But he said, I have to allow this. So you can't fix this, so you got to lean on me totally. And then I tell people, that was the best thing ever happened to me. And when I tell people, prostate cancer was the best thing happened to me, they're like, what? I said, because it got me closer to God. And that's what your trials and tribulations are supposed to do. It's supposed to get you closer to God, not further from God. Hallelujah. 
It's supposed to get you closer to God, not further than God. I got so close to God, it was ridiculous. He probably said, oh, man, can you give me some breathing room? He was trying to shake me. I was like, nah, God, I'm on your coattail, baby. <laughs> you ain't shaking me now, I'm on you. But that's my testimony. And, and, and just a couple of months ago, my retina detached. I go to the doctor one day, I'm on vacation. I come back, I'm like, man, I can't see nothing on my left eye. Go to the doctor, emergency. They can't figure nothing out. I go see a retina specialist. My retina detect. He said, man, you got punch? You been in a fight? Because that's the only reason it has to be forced trauma to the eye, usually for a retina detach. I said, doc, I ain't been in no fight. I'm not no box or nothing. Too old to be fighting. Had, had to have emergency eye surgery. To get my, 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 my retina back detached. Then I had to have laser surgery on the right eye. I said, God, why you didn't tell me I was Joe? <laughs> and I said, Joe, I was like, why you didn't tell me I was, you, you, did you release me? And I didn't know. But I was consistent. I said, God, whatever you got for me, I'm going through this thing. I'm rolling. If the enemy wanted me, he should have got me a long time ago. If he's trying to break me in, breaking me now. But I don't know who that's for, but there's on the call or whoever's going to listen to it. But I just wanted to, the Holy Spirit just said, you need to give your testimony because you were so consistent. And I'm all, he'll tell you, I'm, that's one of my favorite words. I, if, when I leave this earth, I just want somebody to say, man, that dude was just consistent. Always laughing, always. <clears throat> I never knew when he was in pain because he was always consistently a good dude. That's all I want. Hallelujah. And that's it. Pete. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for that. I probably. No, 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 no. Definitely sorry. Yeah, not, not for that. Um, Kate, I'm going to, uh, we got, uh, let's do, uh, let's do like six minutes. Um, I'm done. And you can, you can end us out. If you can end us out in uh prayer and, uh, you know, say, you say your piece, right. And then just, just go on and end us out. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to finish on you. Yes, sir. Powerful Mike, powerful Mike. Um, I wanted to say real quick, my brother Jamie is on the call and and he wanted to speak, but he's caught up in something right now. But he he wanted me just to refer, just to say the consistency of how I send the devotions out in the morning. You know what I'm saying? He getting the married morning and how we talk and how we communicate the consistency of that. Jamie, I love you, brother. But I want to share this also too. Mike, powerful, Mike. Powerful, Mike. Powerful. Because we needed that right there. We needed that, Mike. And um, um, I just want to say right here in Ezekiel 36, and I'm going to start right here on 33. Hallelujah. This is what the sovereign Lord says. On the day I cleanse you from all your sins, I will resettle your towns and the ruins will be rebuilt. The desolate land will be cultivated instead of lying desolate in the sight of all those who pass through it. Hallelujah. They will say, this land that would lay waste had become like the Garden of Eden. The cities that were lying in ruin, desolate and destroyed, are now fortified and inhabited. Then the nations around you that remain would know that the Lord had rebuilt what was destroyed and had replanted what was desolate. The Lord have spoken, and I will do it. Hallelujah. I will do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If anybody else got anything to say, um, I can pray you on out. Now, just, uh, man, I'm glad to see every, every brother on the call, man. Uh, just keep in mind, we may not know everything about you, but know that if you're on the call, you're in a good place. Soak in. Yeah. Somebody said something that's going to help you. Lock into it. You know, we do these calls. I mean, Pete talk about it all the time. We do these calls not to get any glory for ourselves. Me, P, and K, or we don't do this to get any glory for ourselves. This is to glorify God and, and hopefully to not only help the, the gentleman, you know, all the gentlemen on the call, but whoever else hears it. So this is not some, like, accolade, like, oh, we're doing a good thing. No, we're here to glorify God. We're here to to, to give God all the glory and to help somebody get closer to God. Yes, sir. Somebody to get closer to God. 
And uh, I pray everybody has somebody they can lean on and they can talk to, uh, you know, when they're going through it. You know, you want to lean on God, but I, I pray somebody has a, a brother that they can call and just say, man, I'm, I'm, I'm going through. I, I thank God for K and P, you know, I, I can call them brothers, man, when I'm going through it. And I know I'm going to get a godly word. So <laughs> that's the key right there. If you want to call somebody, make sure you call somebody. You're going to get a godly word. You're not going to get somebody that will give you some more crazy stuff. Um, so, you know, I pray that every brother on this call receives something. I pray that you lock into God. I pray that you pick up the word. I pray that you meditate on the word. I pray you become better each and every day. I pray you stay strong. I just pray you heal. Uh, whatever you're going through, I pray that 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 God's hands fall upon you and God's peace fall upon you. I just pray that your, your family is all safe. I pray everything around you would be blessed. I pray abundance over your life. I speak life, not death over you. Hallelujah. I just wanted to say that. Go ahead, Pete. Hey, bro, Mike, go ahead. Mike, go ahead. You know, uh, prayers on out, bro. Go ahead. That, I'm God, sorry. Get out. Go ahead, bro. Get out. Right there. Hey, All right, let's take care. Get out. Mike, do me a favor, man. Get out. Get out. Get out, Romans. Get Romans in there, too. Get Romans in there. And then, Mike, you can go ahead. Go ahead, Kay. We got, we, hey, we got to get, get the harvest, man. We got to get the harvest for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got it, Pete? I mean, Kay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Praise God, man. I'm excited. I'm excited. I love it. I love it. I'm excited. Yeah. Hallelujah. I hate some downtime, man. I hate downtime. I'm with Oak. I can't find the verse. <laughs> <laughs> but here we go. Here we go. Go ahead. <laughs> For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified in. It is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. Hallelujah. 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 All right. You want me, you want me to pray as I, uh, P? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, all right. All right. Let us pray. Father God, we just thank you for this time that you have blessed us with tonight, Father God. We pray that every word that was revealed, Father God, with your word, Father God, being spoken through us, Father God. I pray for each brother on this call, Father God, that, hallelujah, that your hands will fall upon them, Father God. God's peace will fall upon them. Hallelujah. God's love will fall upon them, Father God. Everything that you have in store for them, Father God, let them grasp it, Father God. Hallelujah. Let them produce fruits, Father God. Godly fruits, Father God. Let everywhere that they walk, Father God, your light shines through them, Father God. Hallelujah representatives of you, Father God. Hallelujah, Father God. Let them touch and bless someone each and every day in your, their lives, Father God. As they go forward, Father God, I just pray healing on every man on this call and every man that they touch or every woman that they touch. I pray peace over them, Father God. Hallelujah, Father God. I pray hope will never depart from them, Father God. Let their, let their fate increase more and more, Father God, in everything that you say. Let them meditate on your word day and night, Father God. Let them soak in your glory, Father God. Let them lock into you, Father God. In the name of Jesus, we just bless you tonight, Father God, that everything that you wanted us to say was spoken, Father God. Let them see none of us, Father God, but all of you, Father God. You are, hallelujah, our God, hallelujah. You're our God, Father God. We worship you, we honor you, we praise you, Father God. Without you, Father God, I don't know where I'd be. I don't know where we would be, Father God. I thank you for touching us each and every morning, Father God. When you wake us up, we have an assignment to do. Hallelujah, Father God. You don't wake us up for, for no reason. We have a purpose to wake up every morning. When you, when you breathe air in our lungs, Father God, we just say thank you. Thank you, Father God. Let every man be a man on this call. Be a man of character. Hallelujah. Let every man be a, on this call be a man of excellence, Father God. Let every man be a good father, a good brother, a good son, 
a good uh, uh, husband, a good cousin, a good brother, a good sister. Hallelujah, Father God. Hallelujah. Whoever's watching this, Father God, because somebody's watching this, let us represent you 100%, Father God. We want to represent you all day, every day, 365, Father God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Father God. Let your purpose flow through us, Father God. Let Jeremiah 29, 11, Father God, for your plans. Let every man know the plans that you have for him, Father God. And that plan is to prosper him and not to harm him, Father God. So every man on this call will be prosperous, Father God. Hallelujah. Your words say death and life is in the power of the tongue. So we speak life tonight into each and every man. We speak life. Life, Father God. So we give you all the honor, we give you all the praise, we give you all the glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Man. That if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart <laughs> that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Hey, look, I take it, I take it red. I read 10. I <laughs> both started nine. I read 10. I'm sitting up in Russia like that. <laughs> but bless y'all, brothers. Love y'all. Bless you, bless you, man. Bless y'all. Love you, y'all, man. Have a good evening, fellas. All right. You too, sir.